So this time we're going to talk about equilibrium in weak bases. So bases sometimes feel a little scary, but they're not. They're just like acids. And so we're going to use the same ice table processes in order to calculate equilibrium concentrations. One thing that is different is the way that we set up the reactions. So instead of an acid plus water goes to H3O plus and a conjugate base, instead we're going to have a base plus water goes to hydroxide and the conjugate acid. So we'll practice writing those reactions. So the KB expression works the same way where you're going to end up with OH minus times the conjugate acid concentration divided by the base concentration. Uh, but we do need to think about the way that KB is written. So whenever we see that little subscript B, that means a base and that the reaction will be written using this pattern. Many weak bases are amines. You'll see that word amine a lot. Amine is a name for an organic molecule that contains a nitrogen atom. We've already talked about how ammonia, NH3, can be a base. And we'll see that that's kind of a general trend where we have lots of nitrogens, they can act as bases. We also need to think about that if we want to know pH, we don't have H3O plus in our reaction this time. But we can use OH minus to calculate H3O plus using KW. So don't forget that Kw equals H3O plus times OH minus. And so if we have OH minus but want to know H3O plus, we just have to rearrange. And also remember that we always know Kw. It's 1 times 10 to the minus 14th at 25 degrees C. So let's practice. A good example of a weak base is morphine. Um, which, as you, you've probably heard of it before, a narcotic that's used in painkillers. It's also a weak organic base. So let's write the chemical equation represented by Kb. To write the Kb expression, we start with our base, which we said is morphine. So that'll be C17H19NO. And we'll find out that it's that N that picks up a proton, accepts a proton, to, so that this is a base. Okay, so that's going to be in solution. We're going to react with water. And since we're interested in the Kb, that means that we're going to make OH- minus when water uh, donates a proton to our base, when our base accepts a proton. So when it accepts a proton, that means that we're going to have the same formula. But now, we're just going to tack on an H+. Yeah, it doesn't really matter where it goes. You don't have to put it with the other hydrogens because, in fact, putting it there on the end or maybe even at the beginning can help us show that this one is different. And so that's going to be our Kb expression. And Kb will have some value. We can also write the chemical equation represented by Ka. Now, in this case, we need to switch to the acid form. So we're going to take the C17H19 NO3H plus, the conjugate acid, reacting with water. And it's going to produce H3O plus, because we said this is a Ka reaction. And then we're going to get morphine back. So C17H19NO3. Okay, so we see that the Ka reaction and the Kb reaction are related but they're not exactly the same. They're not just the reverse of one another. You can also see that if you were to add these reactions, look here, add these reactions, that the morphine will cancel and the conjugate acid, morphinium, those will cancel and we will end up with two waters and OH minus and H3O plus. So that means we end up with the auto-ionization of water, Kw. So maybe you remember that if you add chemical reactions, you multiply their equilibrium constants. So we find that Kw equals Ka for the acid form times Kb for the base form. And that means that if we know the value of either Ka or Kb, we can find the other one. So. Um, Kw equals Ka times Kb. That also means, if we think about log rules, that pKa 
plus PKB equals PKW. So we can also figure it out that way. Further, this means that KA and KB are kind of on a sliding scale because they have to um, multiply together to equal KW. So that means that if you have a stronger acid, its conjugate base is going to be weaker because if you have a larger Ka, that means you have to have a smaller Kb. And vice versa, if you have a weaker acid, its conjugate base is going to be a stronger base because the Ka times Kb has to equal uh, 10 to the negative 14. So which of these bases is the strongest? Since we have KB values here, we're going to look for the one that is the biggest, so the most dissociation. And in that case, it's piperidine, because 10 to the minus 3 is the, the smallest negative number, so that's the biggest number overall. Okay, let's do an example calculation. If household ammonia, the same stuff you might have at home, is a solution of approximately 2.94 molar NH3, which has a Kb value of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, what is the pH of ammonia solution? So we're trying to find pH, and we know that pH equals negative log of the H3O plus concentration. Now in this case, we're unlikely to find the H3O plus concentration directly because our reaction is going to involve ammonia. So let's write out our ammonia Kb reaction. So that's going to be ammonia plus water produces OH minus plus NH4 plus. So look, we've just added an H plus to ammonia. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find OH minus at equilibrium. And then we know we're going to need to use Kw to get H3O plus. So let's see how that works out. So here's our reaction. Since we know the value of Kb, we'll use that reaction. Our initial concentration of ammonia is 2.94 molar. And it, water doesn't matter because it's a pure liquid. Initial concentration of hydroxide is close enough to zero. And initial concentration of NH4 plus is zero as well. We know our reaction has to proceed toward the products because we don't have any right now. So we'll go negative x on the reactant side and positive x on the product side. So our equilibrium amount will be 2.94 minus x, and then this will be x and x. So we'll put these back into our Kb expression. So Kb will equal x squared divided by 2.94 minus x, and the value of Kb is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We got that from our problem. Okay, so once again, we can make our small x approximation, where we can assume that 2.94 minus x equals 2.94, and that's going to simplify our math. So x squared divided by 2.94 equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So if you multiply both sides by 2.94 and take the square root, you get that x equals 7.27 times 10 to the minus 3. So now we need to check our assumption. If you take 2.94 and you subtract 0.00727, you get 2.93927, okay? And if you round that back to, whoops, I did some, some fuzzy math there, okay, so you get if you do 2.94 minus 7 times 7 to the minus 3, you get 2.93273. Okay, which doesn't actually round back to 2.94. So that means that our assumption is invalid here. And all that means is that we have to go back and do the quadratic equation. So if you do the quadratic equation, I get that you have x squared plus 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth x minus 5.29 times 10 to the minus 5 equals 0. 
And so if you solve for x, you'll get that x equals 7.26 times 10 to the minus 3 and negative 7.28 times 10 to the minus 3. So the positive one here is the chemically reasonable one. And you'll see that this is really, really close to the 7.27 times 10 to the minus 3. These, this, this assumption was really, really close. But this way we can see what happens if it doesn't really work out. Okay, so that means that the OH minus concentration is 7.26 times 10 to the minus 3. If we want to calculate the pH, we need to know, we said we need to know the negative log of the H3O plus concentration which means that we need to find the H3O plus concentration, like we said in the beginning, from Kw over OH minus. So that's 10 to the minus 14 for Kw divided by the OH minus we just found, 7.26 times 10 to the minus 3. We find that the H3O plus concentration is 1.37 times 10 to the minus 12. That's not a lot of H3O plus. This is a basic solution. So if we take the negative log of that H3O+, plus, we find that the pH equals 11.86, which is consistent with this being a fairly concentrated base solution. So the pH of your household ammonia is about 11.86, which means that it's pretty corrosive for your skin. You should definitely use caution when working with it.